Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Hicks Token Channel. Woohoo! Uh, what time is it? It's a good time. Uh, very nice. Very nice time. Hey, welcome to Hicks Token Channel. Yo, Superman. And of course, uh, we're always having fun, right? We're always having fun. And of course, a uh, big welcome to all the new communities uh, that have been involved. We've had a lot of new communities come onto Pulse Chain, get into our Discord, uh, learn about how amazing Pulse Chain is going to be. And that is not slowing down. Um, so we're going to be talking about cool, cool stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoy. We're going to have quite a few videos play today. So I hope you enjoyed that and some uh, hopefully plenty of insights and entertainment from that. So uh, let's get into it. Here we are on Hex.com, of course, the ultimate savings product in crypto. And of course, what a great time to get involved in Hex. So definitely check out Hex.com as well. But let's get into the chat and say hello. Uh, we're going to be obviously covering uh, Pulse Chain updates. We're going to be covering the highest of stakes in Hex. And we're going to be covering uh, the hit spot, my spotlight project at the moment, BNB Pot. We're going to talk about that, and of course, uh, we're going to get into the Hex Daily Stats as well. I've got two videos probably coming out today, uh, and uh, so in addition to this, and so hopefully you'll look forward to that, uh, one of them is going to be on uh, Poly Maximus, and the other one will be on if you miss Pulse Chain. Uh, so uh, what are your strategies for that? So I think it's a pretty cool video, and uh, so yeah, look forward to that later on today. Now, obviously, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the bell on the way in. Now, obviously, it's Sunday here in good old Kiwiland at the bottom of the world. And, of course, we are in the future. It's currently 12.32 p.m., uh, Sunday, the 16th of October. And I know uh, that around the world in Los Angeles at the moment, it's currently about 4.30 in the morning. Uh, but it is, and it's still, uh, sorry, 4.30 in the afternoon, I should say. And it's still yesterday. It's still Saturday. So still uh, having good times on, on Saturday in good old America. Uh, currently, uh, New York is currently 7.30 uh, in the evening. And, of course, uh, London at the moment, is uh, on Sunday now, but it's only 12.30 in the morning. Uh, put, get in the chat there, folks, and let us know what time it is where you are around the world. Uh, that's pretty cool. So get in there, folks. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, big hi from Hex Token Channel. Welcome. Uh, we've got Bloodfish King in the house as well. Woohoo! Uh, what's it? Uh, I've never seen an interesting crypto movie, but I think this will be epic. That's a good point. We've got our poll. I just posted that out there. So let me know. Uh, get in there and vote. How excited are you about the Hex Token uh, sorry, the Hex. Sorry, what did I say? That's crazy. Uh, how excited are you about the highest of stakes movie? Uh, but yeah, if you're excited about Hex Token, you can uh, you can do that too. Uh, so yeah, uh, hell yeah, this this is going to be a big bof, box office hit. Uh, and of course, that will be subject to distribution. We know that they're trying to organize uh, distributions with uh, the big streamers like Netflix, Disney, uh, uh, or the Tulu and all things like that. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, on Kinetics, we had uh, was it uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, whatever uh, the guy's name. Very nice chat uh, talking about uh, talking about the highest of stakes as he's a stakeholder or something. Uh, so cool. Uh, yeah, hell yeah, box office hit. Uh, this will be big, good awareness. So obviously, general awareness of Hex and Pulse Chain will increase, which is really cool. And of course, it will be cool. Help new Hexkins. Uh, so obviously, give a bit more help for those people. And of course, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. It's gonna be good. I'll watch it. Uh, but yeah, all right there. So get in there and vote, folks. Bit of fun. You know, I like my polls. So uh, pretty cool. Katie's in the house there. Woohoo! Hello, everybody. Let's go. That's the way. I love it. And uh, Katie's one of our awesome moderators in our Discord. Uh, so big shout out, Katie. A crypto Heartbeat, man. Woohoo! Let's go. Uh, one of our top YouTubers, actually. Crypto Heartbeat, like, like, like Rags to Riches, some of our top YouTubers in the space. Uh, and a good, great to see them in the chat there as well. Big shout out. And of course, they're now syndicated on our Discord. Um, so uh, their videos and Twitter, so hopefully the videos, we're having a little issues with the videos, but uh, hopefully we've got the tweets coming in from Crypto Heartbeat and Rag to Riches, a big shout out to that, shout out for them. We've now got five syndicated YouTubers in our Discord, um, and of course you can jump into the Discord there, it really is going to be a great place uh, for onboarding people on the Pulse chain, and of course Hex as well, uh, so definitely check that out. We've also got uh, Texan Token, which is the last day at the moment, uh, to go and uh, donate to Texan Token. And that's down the bottom there. That will be launching on Pulse Chain. Uh, but the, uh, even bigger than that, it's going to be not only funding a political cause, but it's also uh, going to onboard massive for Pulse Chain. And of course, they're going to be focusing on a lot of educational tools uh, for helping uh, no coiners. And uh, they're, they're targeting something up to like half a million uh, people to come on uh, to Pulse Chain there. And of course, even if you get 1% of that, you've made a huge, huge, uh, uh, huge impact. And of course, um, that's probably the biggest project out there, uh, actually focusing on uh, mass adoption there. So uh, pretty cool. Because when you do mass adoption, you've got to actually help people as well. You can't just uh, let them, you know, out in the wild. You've actually got to give them programs to help them get you know, educated when they're no-coiners. 
Uh, so really exciting stuff to coming out of Crypto Heartbeat and Rank to Riches. So and check that out. Five YouTubers now in here. We've got Craig Wadding, of course, from and Gen Hex. We've got Heinz Crypto, uh, Hex Token, yes, of course, and now Rags the Riches and um, uh, Crypto Heartbeat all feeding through uh, automatically uh, their videos and tweets through here. So pretty exciting and looking forward to that. We're going to keep bo- focusing on onboarding uh, and spreading the word about Pulse Chain. It's going to be absolutely epic. Um, so cool, cool. We're going to have lots of updates about that. Let's get in the house. We got Hexen as well. Woo! Good to see Hexen. Uh, Katie is excited as I am, and of course Andrew. Happy Sunday, family. One day closer to Pulse Chain launch. Absolutely, one day closer. And we're going to talk about a lot of those updates uh, during this live stream. JB's in the house. Says it's twelve thirty-three a.m. in Wales. Uh, that's about right to me. And of course Sydney says ten thirty-three a.m. on Sunday morning. Just had breakfast. Says us Andrew. Nice. Uh, good old Sydney there with the old Sydney Harbour Bridge. If you haven't seen that, have great fireworks shows. Uh, in uh, New Year's time, and so it's pretty exciting that in Australia. Uh, Blobfish King says, uh, 10 a.m. for me in Australia, and uh, Crypto Heartbeat says, 6.30 uh, here uh, in the afternoon, five hours left in Texan Token donation phase. Nice one. So, yeah, just uh, check it out on our Discord. Uh, Texan Token and KD can help you out if you need some extra help there. Hexen says, 6.30 a.m. We're here. Scott says, 10.30 a.m. in Australia, and uh, Crypto Tycoon, 4.34 p.m., the home of the Hex Pulse Conferences, Las Vegas. Ching, ching, ching. Uh, good to see Crypto Tycoon's house. Uh, Life Benice says, hello, how are you today? Now, this is the ultimate strategy on this channel, of course. Hex, E-Hex, PLS, and PLX, it's for the win. Absolutely, Life Beneath. Woo! And, of course, uh, Brennan says, uh, howdy all, 10.30 a.m. here in Australia. Says, Brennan, welcome to Brennan. See you guys in the house as well. Good to see you. Uh, who else there? Brian, our uh, one of our two community leaders uh, there. Brian is in the house. Sup, folks? Good to see you. Uh, Brian says it's uh, currently 4.30 uh, p.m. in Arizona. So uh, Arizona is a pretty nice state there, Brian. So it sounds like you're uh, living the dream there, that's for sure. All right, cool. Uh, let us uh, jump into it, folks. Let us see where the markets are for crypto. We're going to do this a little bit differently today. And, of course, uh, we're going to be talking about Hex.com uh, and, of course, Pulse Chain and, of course, BNB Pot. Those are kind of our three headline projects today. Uh, so stay tuned. We're going to have quite a few videos. So uh, look forward to it. Uh, so at the moment, though, BDC holding up at 19,000. I guess many of us are still expecting November to be uh, the bear market. And, of course, so maybe if we're going to get that bottom, uh, it will happen there. And, of course, we know crypto can move down pretty fast. Uh, we saw that earlier with BDC when it did those big dives, you know, 12,500, 14,500. And, of course, uh, we got down to what? What was it? Uh, 17, 76 or something like that. Um, so, yeah, ETH there at 1276 at the moment, down uh, 1.6% and BNB at 269. XRP at 48 cents there. Just having a look at a couple of green ones. We've got Dot and Dodge. Uh, good old Dodge, eh? Uh, that's at 5.8 cents there, and that's up slightly. Um, and, of course, uh, what else we got going on? We've got a couple of green ones here. Uh, E-Gold there. E-Gold, how much is that? Up 5%. And I think Maker, is that Maker? Uh, Maker there, up uh, 6% on Maker. So there is a few little green shoots there. Uh, but uh, much the uh, what's it? The floor is lava uh, still. Not badly lava, but uh, lightly, lightly red lava. Uh, that's pretty much it. Sort of uh, warm lava, not burning hot lava. But, uh, that's kind of a is that night nonsense. I think it's mostly nonsense. But anyway, all right. So cool. Uh, let's get into it. We've got a couple of things now. Uh, we're going to get into Hex, of course, uh, and of course uh, Richard Hart, of the founder of Hex, uh, one of the few tokens that's done ten thousand X, and of course uh, over twenty thousand X if you were staked in Hex uh, if you got it early. Uh, this is from the fifth of January, twenty twenty, of course, uh, the all time low. Uh, so pretty exciting there. Let's get into some of the cool things. Obviously, they're making a documentary about Hex uh, because it has been so such an amazing performer. Obviously, it's pulled down from there, but still holding up relatively uh, well uh, from its uh, beginning uh, in a short time of uh, t- short time frame. Obviously, Hex is coming up to three years in about a month and a half. Uh, so very excited for that. So let's get into a couple of things. The highest of stakes, of course, is a uh, Emmy Award winning team, uh, and of course uh, that means they can open doors as well. Not only can they produce a movie, a documentary at the highest standards uh, that you can get, um, but they can also open doors because they have those awards, which is pretty awesome. They also have the networks, and of course, uh, we're going to see all that come together. Uh, they currently obviously finished the production, and they're in now the uh, distribution phase, trying to get uh, you know the deals done with the big streamers, and so we look forward to that, and uh, maybe we might be as lucky as having this come out at the end of the year, December, is kind of when the target is. Obviously, I think that's subject to distribution deals, um, and uh, yeah, so we're excited to see that. They do have a sales agent, so you've got to go to, imagine you're, you've done your form, you've got to go to a sales agent, 
uh, you've got to get a sales agent and then you've got to negotiate with the uh, intermediaries that uh, then get you to the streamers. It's kind of like that step. Uh, but when you've got, you know, um, uh, was it Grammys or Emmys? I think it's Emmys they've got and you can, you know, it speeds it up. And of course, you've got a quality product. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Now, obviously, uh, crypto is uh, ex a pretty exciting topic. A lot of people like it. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the streamers will say, hey, this is different content. We don't have a lot of this stuff around. You know, there's some uh, Coinbase stuff, that, which is more like a, um, uh, uh, a marketing piece. There's old Bitcoin uh, documentaries and videos, which are all pretty old now uh, and, you know, somewhat dated. Uh, some of the information is still great, but uh, so kind of dated. And so, you know, the markets, they're wanting something different, what, some new content. And I think the, the Richard Hart and the Hex and, of course, the community uh, Pulse Chain coming up. I think that all matches into something that's really exciting. And so I'm expecting we will get uh, some good traction uh, with the streamers, uh, the streaming services there. All right, so cool. Let us uh, get into some of the stuff here. Now, we've had a few things. We're going to have a look at the one of the original teasers uh, for the highest of stakes, which is going to be covering this whole journey over the last almost three years. Um, and, of course, three years will be 2nd December 2022. And so we're looking forward to that in about a month and a half. So uh, this could end up being pretty exciting around the third birthday X. So let's quickly check out the highest of stakes uh, uh, little um, teaser that they've done. Uh, and of course, it's been upgraded once as well. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, every scammer in the world is going to tell you something similar. But in this case, you are actually going to have regret. <laughs> I mean, you're scamming everyone. Richard Hart, he's got a history of being called the spam master. There's some weird things going on with his coins. Making one of the biggest Ponzi schemes that we have ever seen. Hex coin is 1,000% a scam coin. People are going to lose money because of you. Remember all the haters? All the haters that told you that I was a scammer and Hex was a scam? I got bad news for the haters. We're making new all-time highs where everything else is getting wrecked. Price is up four or five thousand fold in 600 days. I've made enough money in the last week that I could buy a house in cash. I would never have to work another day in my life. I'm here to shell. I want to change the world and I can only do that if people participate. The only thing that matters in this world is goods and services. Everything else is accounting. And our made up imaginary internet money is better than the government's made up imaginary internet money. Both of them are only backed by the shared fiction of the humans believing that they have value. If Hex is a religion, then Richard is God. I am in crypto for glory. I want to have the best cryptocurrency that's ever existed. I want to have the best performing asset that's ever existed. And so I think of blockchain as like the internet. In the 90s, everyone thought the internet was just for email. <laughs> I bought some this morning. They're imaginary quarters. Like, it's like playing Monopoly. I put it all in. I put, I mean, I went. Like, all of what? <laughs> all of our house money. This is a force that is not going to go away. The cryptocurrency is not going away. And at some point, the people that you met that you thought were crazy loon birds, they're going to be in the 1%, and they're going to be the people that own half everything. So uh, that's pretty much been the teaser that's been out and about for a long time. And of course, they did a little upgrade one, and uh, that's sort of some of the stuff that goes out there. So it kind of creates this drama. Uh, people don't fully get the context behind everything. But that's what the whole film documentary, The Highest of Stakes, is going to be about. So it's going to be a step up from this teaser, of course, and, of course, have all the characters and all the personalities, all the drama, the excitement, uh, the larger than life stuff, all that stuff's going to be in there. It's going to really grab attention. Uh, so far, everybody that's seen it has uh, said that it's uh, pretty much incredible. And, of course, uh, now at the moment, they've got a 40-piece orchestra doing the score for it. We're just going to just take that even to the next level because we know music is such a big uh, thing and driving uh, emotion uh, in the in the movie. So uh, looking forward to that big time. Uh, Eric says so much FOMO, absolutely so much FOMO. Uh, boom says uh, uh, says brilliant, nice one. All right, so uh, since that time, of course, we've had some little teasers come out from the highest estates team, and uh, we're going to have a couple of look at a couple of those. So let's check that out. Some amazing robot action. Check out the move Tristan has planned. 
So we're here on the magic wall of Richard Hart. Uh, Tristan, go ahead and show them the move. It's this like smash, right? So it like moves really quick, which for like a camera, it's very fast. We're gonna do playback here so you can see it on the screen. What we're doing is showing you the hex.com website, but then the camera just flies in right on that 38% yield. Wow! Look at that. That is movie magic, my friends! Pretty epic. <laughs> It's a little awkward on camera. It's his first time on social media. Isn't okay, it cute? Okay. It's cute. <laughs> oh, I see. Boom. Good now. Okay. So October 2021, I packed my life up and moved to America. Six months later, I'm on set working with a $150,000 robot. I'd never operated one before, nor even been in the presence of one. And as a filmmaker by heart, this was super exciting. Now, did I think I'd just pack my bags in Australia and waltz onto this set so quickly? Absolutely not. All of this happened so quickly. I usually stop and think, how? How did I go from living a simple life by the beach to working on a younger self's dream set? One thing the robot taught me is we are only limited to what we think we can do. In the reflections on it to make it so we just do it this way. I'll tell you this, over the two weeks working on set, it was thrilling, sometimes even scary. This piece of machinery moves quick. Overall, it was incredible to see the shots that came from using the robot. It's a massive step in elevating the production, but also made it fun and exciting to see everyone's reaction when the DP shouts, robot moves. If only I could tell my younger self that I'd be here today. I wonder, I wonder what he would have to say. So what I like about that shot is that we get to see some of the ways that the directors are talking about certain shots. We get to see some of the technology they have. Uh, we get to see some of the uh, talent and uh, young talent that they bring into the uh, into the uh, film documentary. And man, it's a really, really exciting. Here's another one. This is the third one, of course. So uh, we went from the teaser into these uh, production teasers. And of course, this is another one that they did, which I thought was pretty cool. And this is subtle. It shows you some of their subtle talent and the way that they think about uh, shots which i thought was pretty good this looks a little bit weird you've got evan here holding a shear but this is a master class in how you bring photos to life because here this is uh mr uh richard working as in air conditioning and so what we're going to do we've got the sunlight coming in we're using the uh, shear here just to soften it and now give us the florida summer breeze please look at that florida summer breeze and then we just have the camera move just like that Tell me that is not so much more cinematic than just seeing a darn photo on the screen. That's right, my friend. Some more movie magic. Summer right, days. Evan? Movie magic. Movie magic. Doesn't feel like it, but it is. So that's what I like about that is that you get to see these guys are thinking about things in a really beautiful artistic way. And uh, that talent's really coming through. So I love this sort of, these sort of teaser clips. And uh, I know that based on everybody that's seen it so far, they've just like all been super impressed. And so uh, we won't just get clip snippets. We'll get this full uh, film documentary uh, with personalities, characters, themes, uh, probably a protagonist, antagonist, all those sort of things. The excitement of crypto, the excitement of uh, those people that have been successful in crypto, and of course the opportunities that uh, there as well. So pretty exciting. So this is kind of the build up that we've had over the last uh, quite a bit of time. And I think that's pretty exciting. Uh, CI says, uh, CI says, uh, it would be really cool if the documentary attracts new people to have a crypto savings account with Hex. And that's right. Uh, I think it's going to really lift up the awareness, the interest. And of course, uh, it's going to be very, very fun there uh, from that point of view. So uh, this leads us up to today. So today, only just a little while ago, maybe an hour ago, uh, we got uh, a release of the orchestra, the final piece. We know the production is finished. We know they're in distribution phase. Uh, but now we got this orchestra uh, are playing out 40 piece orchestra beautiful and as you guys know with epic movies and scores the music is such a big deal uh really t lifts our spirit and takes us down makes us feel the moment uh and uh pretty exciting there so uh, let's check it out uh this is hot off the press if you haven't seen it already so let's go for gold and uh yeah it's a little different here so it's gonna be fun <laughs> Thank you. 
So I think you see uh, this is going to be really epic. That was just one little slither, one little slither against the backdrop of one piece of the video. Now, if you guys have ever seen animation movies and all that sort of stuff, you see, you've often seen this before where the orchestra is there looking up. You might have seen Star Wars. They do Star Wars. They have the Star Wars movie running. And, of course, they're doing a theme to that particular section of the of the film or whatever. So that there was just one of those little slithers of things. And uh, it's going to be pretty incredible to see. Uh, really will be so cool. Now, obviously, Richard is a rebel, so you know wearing a, wearing one of those those, those expensive audi, uh, uh, hats that he's wearing. I'm not even sure what it's called, a bonnet, I guess. And of course, uh, that's pretty exciting. So it's going to be pretty cool to see that. And of course, I think that uh, people are going to uh, really be um, captured by the imagination. We don't see a lot of new stuff. If you don't, if you think about it. There's not a lot of new content out there. There's a lot of re rehashes, redoing uh, movies, and, and often not very good. And of course, uh, we, people are after new content, so I think this is going to be the sweet spot. Uh, and of course, crypto. Everyone, okay, what, a lot of people don't know about crypto, and they they uh, have these uh, fascinations about it. And other people who are in crypto uh, obviously know how exciting it can be. Uh, and of course, uh, animating it in a full document like this is going to be epic. So I'm really excited. A 40 piece orchestra uh, score. That's going to be amazing, man. Honestly, uh, we're going to be going able to go like a roller coaster ride, go up and down with the emotions of all the characters and all the things. So I'm very excited to see that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, the big thing, of course, is going to be massive, massive awareness. They really want to reach the biggest audience. And of course, that's going to introduce a lot of people to Hex. You know, the pretty much one of the few uh, projects, tokens that have done a 10,000 X. Uh, a 20,000 X with, with staking and stuff like that. So uh, it's a big deal. And of course, uh, we know that uh, Hex is expanding anyway, the community every day. We cover the stats. And of course, we'll be covering that later on, the Hex Daily stats. Uh, but of course, this is really going to supercharge the awareness, not just for Hex and Pulse Chain and Richard Hart and all the characters in it, but also for crypto generally. And of course, crypto has been missing, I think, a film document like, documentary like this for a while, you know, and uh, you know, that's a real story, not a marketing piece like, say, Coinbase's video, but something that's really, really cool. So it's going to be fun, folks. Uh, that's my quick coverage of that. That was pretty, pretty neat on that one. And, uh, yeah, very excited to see that coming out uh, for sure. Let's play that one more time just to get that feel. Uh, let's go. Tell you what i really love the score sometimes people can do scores and it doesn't quite sound right that score sounds really on the money so i'm very excited about that we'll probably play that a bit later towards the end of the live stream again uh, but that's kind of uh, the update there from the highest stakes very excited maybe we could have this out in december man oh man oh man we'll all be able to see it it's going to be pretty cool Brittany says the church will be in the museum as well <laughs> that's pretty funny uh this just a single red bull can and a glass case says uh, the false player yeah yeah i get it i get it Andrew's in house as well. Yeah, that's pretty funny from uh, the Pulse player there. It's beautiful to see us show now. Yeah, pretty exciting. All right, it's cool. Let's jump over to Hex.com. So check it out, folks. You want to learn more about Hex.com, uh, the link's in the video description, of course. Let's jump forward to the X price at the moment. It's a very generous price at the moment to get in. And, of course, currently at 3.11 cents on the old Hex chart there. So uh, you can see we're kind of in this accumulation phase here and definitely on the bottom end of that. So pretty cool. Uh, and uh, we'll be watching out for this. Now, obviously, Richard Hartz talked about the bottom of the market, and, of course, uh, we're going to be talking about that too. We've got Maxi at the moment is at 6.11 cents, of course. Let's have a look at the premium on Maxi. That looks like it's had a bit of a rebound there, a little bit there, up 2%, uh, at 1.9592, nine, uh, uh, just a little tidy, small rebound there, uh, 1.95 uh, hex per Maxi at the moment. Let's have a quick look at the Hedron price. Uh, 3418 uh, As you guys know, I've got two probable plays 
at the moment. Hedron is one of them, and the price is looking pretty good to me as a nice little entry point. And, of course, uh, the other one, of course, we're going to talk about later, which is uh, uh, the PLSD uh, Pulse of Bitcoin. So we talk about that. That's kind of the uh, near-term probable plays. And, of course, the possible play, uh, which I think is uh, just the best possible possible play you could have, is BNB Pot. We're going to talk about that later on the live stream, too. So stay tuned for that. Icoza at the moment is currently at $1.01. Uh, one dollar at one at the moment so uh, that's pretty cool uh and holding up pretty nicely and of course uh, that is part of the big play for hedron uh, coming up in less than a month folks uh is going to be amazing hey look we've got katie's just put a, a five hex token membership uh, gift out there uh definitely take those up looks like andrew reynolds uh brennan's uh, get, taking that dave down under uh charity and chance nicely so well done to you and thanks so much kd for uh, your generosity that's the second day in a row so awesome stuff and welcome to all the new Hex Token channel members. Very excited to see that. And uh, definitely welcome. All right, cool. Uh, what is that? Someone's writing some really cool stuff there. Uh, Katie says, RH is the FOMO maker. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. All right, cool. Uh, let's. So those are the, the market prices at the moment. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into Richard Hart talking about the price call, uh, saying that the bear market could very well. Now, remember, could is the key phrase there uh, by the end of November. So let's have a look here. Uh, we are expecting maybe that we'll get that drop in the market. Maybe that could signal the end of the bear market. And of course, we're watching the federal uh, federal federal reserve interest rate hikes. And maybe the last big one is in November. That's kind of the play there. Let's listen to Richard Hart on uh, trying to call the bottom here. So uh, enjoy. Let's measure the next bear. Let's do that. Let's see how smart Richard be. Next bear market. 364 days. That's about a year. Okay. Now let's measure this bear market from my 65K top, 427 days. But let's measure this bear market from the Judas candle, which where I think you have to deleverage from because people got long there. They need to get the shit liquidated out of them and undone. All them people need wrecked. NFT guys wrecked. Leverage traders wrecked. Assholes that sold you to top, wrecked. Michael Saylor, I'm talking to you, you bitch. Um, so, like, let me measure it for you. We had, like, 300 and... I'm going to get on the daily for this. I'm going to get on the daily. So I can give you more specific measurements. One day we'll have advanced screen sharing technology, but we haven't come that far yet. So if I have measured this correct, and I'm going to verify that I did. Right now, we're 332 days in from the uh, top. And that top, the 69K top, was November 21. So a year out from that is November 21 again. Right. That's a month and a week, bro, or a month and uh, two weeks, month and two weeks. So in a month and two weeks, bro, maybe Fed, to, you know, finds a way to pivot, can't can't raise rates anymore because uh, it's blowing out jobs too much. You know, like we get our 85% dip doodle, whatever, like, bro, next month, month and a half, you better have your plan ready because it could be the end of the bear, bro. It could. Next month could be the end of the bear. And that's good ass news, man. You know? Yeah. So people don't realize it. You know, people don't think a bear ever ends. They think it just goes on forever. Yeah. Nope. It doesn't. Unless you buy the wrong fucking coin, it just goes to zero and stays there forever. But in shit we're looking at has product market fit, doesn't tend to go to zero and stay. Yeah. Does normal kind of oscillate stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I think the best news I have to leave with you guys is pulse chain is going to be stronger and better with a more well audited consensus method that will benefit from the upgrades that the theorem will make in the future. And it didn't cost us any time. It was quicker. And then, so that's great news. And then this uh, bear market could be over in a month is great news.
I just realized that I'm muted. Um, so I've got to take the mute off there. Yeah, so uh, pretty exciting there. So we've got the interest rate rises. We've got um, uh, we've got uh, particularly potentially market capitulation in November, and uh, maybe by the end of November we could have uh, a bit of a turnaround in the market. Maybe we start slowly moving up, or at least moving sideways then up. Uh, so pretty cool. We got the hex third birthday uh, on the second of December. We got the highest of stakes potentially. Uh, maybe we'll have V3 Pulse Chain uh, test net, and of course a very tight one there, and then uh, maybe just a launch after that. Uh, obviously, we've got different arguments between dates of December all the way through to April at the moment. There's uh, good arguments for anything between that time, uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, nice uh, December January launch will be pretty well received. Um, so we'll see how we get on there. So pretty cool. Uh, sound got rugged, says Katie. Yeah, it did get rugged. Sorry about that. Um, you know what? I put the mute on. Then I was going to say, remember the mute is on. And I forgot about it straight away. Hilarious. Because I started listening to Richard Hart. I was listening to what he was saying. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, I got uh, I got rugged by Richard Hart by listening to him. That's pretty much it. He rugged my sound. He rugged my sound. All right. No blame. No blame. Uh, Stressful Struggle says, I sold all my liquid hex last night. Makes me sad. Pretty sick of the slow rug from Richard says, Stressful Struggle. Uh, and what else have we got? Uh, Brennan says, Lip Sync. Yeah, I was lip syncing, that's for sure. Um, and of course, uh, who needs sound? Te uh, was it telepathy is the new communication method? Yeah, that's true. Hey, welcome everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the bell. Let's get into the next uh, section. And of course, uh, let's get into the uh, markets. We're going to be jumping into um, uh, the free claim. So we're going to talk about some of the other charts now. And then when you get into Pulse Chain uh, updates, and then of course we're going to jump over to the Spotlight Project moment, BNB Pot, uh, which is uh, also got its own market fit, just like Hex, uh, it's got its own market fit, and of course just like Pulse Chain. Uh, so we've been talking about that too, and uh, so look forward to that one. All right, let's get into the airdrops free claims at the moment. Uh, we've got PLSD. This is my second probable play, and all these charts are playing out pretty well at the moment. Um, so looking good there, PLSD at six dollars. Uh, and just slow edging up. Why Why is it going up? Well, we're expecting uh, this, the dual token, uh, which is going to be uh, um, uh, Pulse Bitcoin. And of course, uh, that's going to bring some sort of mining feature. Uh, and of course, uh, we're looking forward to the gamification. Uh, now, I expect this to reasonably expect within the next week. And of course, uh, that's a slightly updated view from a couple of days ago, uh, given information. So uh, that's probably within that time frame. Looking very excited for this. Now, a couple of days ago, we did show the uh, UI interface. It didn't have a lot on it. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to that uh, when it goes live. So that's kind of it. Uh, it may have a big uh, burning feature as a, a, a related to the Bitcoin, uh, the Pulse Bitcoin, and uh, for PLSD. Um, and so uh, this is uh, probably helping the price to go up here. So uh, looking forward to that one. Uh, that's a probable play, of course. Um, so very exciting. So very cool. Let's get on to it, of course. We've got the weight token at the moment. Look at this big jump in weight token. Someone's trying to surprise us here, but it was uh, actually getting weaker. It broke down through half a penny. Now, this is one of the free claims. And, of course, uh, we can see that it got down to uh, 0046, so uh, under half a penny. But it's had a big, big uh, jump today. Uh, all the way got as high as uh, eight, uh, just over eight-tenths of a penny. And it's down at seven-tenths of a penny at the moment at the top of the range. Uh, so very exciting to see that. And obviously, someone decided to pick up some of that. Now, a lot of people are just waiting. There's probably about 120 million minted, uh, maybe 1.2, 1.3 uh, billion accrued. There are different eights, different sacrifices, which make you qualify for this particular airdrop. I've actually restructured a few things in the Discord. We're trying to restructure it so people get the information, the best information as quick as possible um, and stuff like that. So uh, let's jump over into some of the changes that I've made in Discord under Pulse Chain Projects. Uh, we've got new cho tokens chat. That's the same. We've got Spotlight Project at the moment. So these are ones I think are really, really uh, amazing probability plays. Uh, you know, speculative plays, but they have the best gamification. Um, so those are the kind of the ones there. And of course, uh, absolutely market fit. You've got to have market fit uh, if you're going to be talking about those sort of projects. BNB Pot, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, Pulse Chain Projects, of course, got everything we normally have in there. Uh, of course, the Pulse Police, the Pulse Chain News with over 120 projects in there. The Pulse Sacrifice Projects, if you want to do the sacrifices with some of the uh, projects that are coming up. Now, there's different levels of quality, folks, in those. You must be very careful and do your investment due diligence. Uh, there's, I, I would say, um, maybe 10% are going to do particularly well, and the rest of them uh, will either be average or, or or struggle or fail or rug pull or whatever. Not rug pull, but you know, just uh, end end up uh, collapsing. In most cases, there might be one or two rugs. You never know in those. But that's pretty much it. And of course, you can get a list of some of the many ones that we've talked about in the past. There uh, is there as well. So that's pretty much it. The other one, of course, I made a new folder here: airdrops, free claims. And of course, uh, this is just to help people get an idea. A lot of people come into the chat and go, what's the airdrop? What can I free claim? What can I do this? 
And of course, we're trying to make it as safe place as possible. So we've got the wait, the wait token. Uh, free claim is obviously on at the moment. You can mint any time at the Pulse Chain launches. We've got the Pulse Pleb coming up. That's launching soon. Sorry, the Paul Pleb is uh, free claims launching soon. So we've got the link there. We've also got the Kira airdrop there as well coming up on the 11th of November on ETH Chain. Um, and of course, a copy on the Pulse Chain. Now, the one caveat of this, of course, it's going to be launching uh, on the airdrops for the Pulse Chain only. It uh, looks like you're going to get uh, 11 Kira for Pulse Chain if you sacrifice for that and 11 Kira for Pulse X. Uh, that's a 22 if you've done both those sacrifices. So if you're in, in the sacrifice of class for those, you'll be able to get access to those. So we're going to try and keep that up to date as much as possible. And uh, hopefully that answers a lot of people's questions there. Uh, so cool. Uh, what else there? Uh, I think that's it on that one. I think let's have a look through here. I think those are the other changes I made. Uh, so cool. Um, now, oh, the other thing, of course, uh, we've done, made an archive channel. So if you want to, uh, they've got the Zen free claim there. So if you, we covered that, the launch is on five chains. So if you want to uh, check that out that. Now that's going to make it safer. A lot of people are getting scammed. Um, so uh, actually, I just can't even see the, the update I've done on there. A lot of people are getting scammed. So we just want people to have, use the right contracts and things like that. Safety is a very important thing. And of course, uh, obviously that project will be co uh, copied over, forked over on the Pulse chain. So uh, that's going to be a community that's coming as well. And of course, we've welcomed a lot of people from the Zen community over the last couple of days into the Pulse chain uh, community. And of course, uh, helping them to uh, see the big picture of things is great. We're offering more value to them. Very exciting. All right, so cool. Uh, let us uh, jump back to the charts there. So that's where the weight token looking pretty good. Uh, we can see the Zen price at the moment just doing what we expected it to do. And that is just keep falling because obviously massive inflation at the beginning. Uh, you know, you can mint uh, something like 60,000 Zen uh, for one day mint. Uh, in eight years time, it's going to be 10, uh, 10 Zen in about eight years time. Uh, so it's got a long way to go for its inflationary issue to go through. And that means at some stage it may have some pauses and things like that. Uh, but ultimately, you've got to get through the inflation period. And so really, it's a possible a possible play, uh, but it's way out in the future. And of course, nothing is guaranteed. It may, may just may not hold traction. You just never know. It is on five chains at the moment. And of course, we can also see the BZN one there, uh, which was the second chain that launched. And that is currently uh, following the same path. Not, it's not quite as fast, but uh, at least it wasn't at the beginning, but it started to gain traction there and now at uh, that price. So it's currently got uh, five zeros. And 104, uh, 104. Now, someone was asking what the little five was on here. That's five decimal places. Basically, it's got five uh, five zeros after the, the decimal place. So uh, some people were confused by that who are new to crypto. This is what we do in our Discord. So if you are a bit new to crypto and maybe uh, maths and things like that, we try to give you uh, give you those examples. And we'll be doing a lot of stuff on onboarding coming up. You're going to be seeing a lot of stuff. So Rag to Riches and Crypto Heartbeat are going to be doing a lot of educational videos on onboarding uh, no coiners, which is going to be awesome to Pulse Chain. And we're also doing that in our Discord. We've got amazing community leaders uh, like Brian, Fat Sammy, KD, Sandy Beach, and others that uh, help people out in that regard. So uh, it's pretty exciting. All right, cool. Uh, let us jump over to uh, Pulse Chain. Uh, before we do that, of course, let's see what has been happening with the Hex Whale Bot. And of course, uh, over the last 24 hours, let's see what the big whales and Hex have been doing. Uh, and let's see what we've got there. So uh, we had, obviously yesterday we had a sell there, but uh, let's see what's happened. We got 10 half million hex in stake 23 hours ago. Uh, they got a 49% APY. Wow. Uh, that's probably going to play into a little bit into the uh, T-share rate uh, today. And of course, uh, what else there we've got? Uh, let's see what else we've got. It's a pretty quiet day, actually. Uh, looks like a very quiet day. Uh, yep, very quiet day, folks, on the whale bot. Not a lot happening there, uh, pretty much it. Let's have a look at the stakes that are coming out in the near term. Uh, and, of course, uh, we, the, definitely the landscape's changing a lot. Let's do a whole year, eh? Let's do a whole year. Um, normally, I just do to the end of the year, but let's do the whole year. So, it's, uh, 16th of October. Uh, let's go and we've got the 17th there. That seems pretty good to me. And bam. All right. So, we've got these candles coming up here. Uh, those are the ones. So, we've got one on the 16th. 438 million hex coming out on the 16th. Um, so... Obviously, that's U.S. time, not uh, or at least UTC time, I should say. Uh, so that's coming out. And, of course, uh, we've got the rest of these candles a front run here. So a lot of these are large holders uh, that just uh, stake short term. Um, and some of them will be longer term holders that have been, uh, their stakes are just coming due at some stage. So that's pretty cool. This is the whole year ahead. Um, and, of course, you can see there's not a lot uh, in the second half of the year at the moment. Obviously, some of these ones in the front will re keep restaking every month or two months or three months, uh, kind of that short staker. Uh, we have this one candle, which is 600 million. Uh, but what you'll have noticed is, at least at the moment, uh, next year, we have no billion candles. So we used to have billion candle hex, hex stakes. They have, uh, for the time being at least, uh, they've disappeared. The only way we're going to get that, of course, is if some of these larger 
uh, stakers end up staking on top of each other in the future. But at the moment, that profile has changed, and that's an interesting story uh, as uh, things uh, move 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 along uh, slowly and slowly. Uh, it's uh, we're getting smaller candles, and of course, after the Maximus contract uh, that did 810 million hex staked out for a long period of time, uh, and of course, uh, over 1.1 billion, I think it was in total with their Maximus contract. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot of hex off the market that way. Uh, we've also had a lot of hex off the market with the HSI buybacks as well. And of course, uh, with HSI wrap stakes, there's been incredible results coming out of there. Our circulating supply is decreasing at a faster pace because of those two contracts. We've also got uh, the hex, uh, the Power City Flex coming out. I'm really hoping that they launch on Ethereum. Uh, now, I don't know if they're going to do that, but uh, that, that'd be pretty cool to see another uh, different play on there as well. Uh, and we're probably going to, depending on when Pulse Chain launches, we'll probably see a lot of, uh, you know, we could possibly see, it's my speculation, uh, a couple more uh, leading projects uh, end up uh, doing things like that on the on the chain. Obviously, we've got the Maximus team, uh, Dipcatcher Net, working on Poly Maximus, which is going to be bring uh, pooled bidding and staking uh, to the uh, Hex HSI stakes on uh, Hedron. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And that's going to be a massive Hedron burn, massive Icosa inflation, and, of course, massive HSI stake uh, auctions. Uh, it's going to be absolutely exciting to see that in November coming up 13th there. Uh, so it's going to be pretty cool. That's kind of where we're at, at the moment. Let's just zoom in on the end of the year uh, just to get a, a slightly closer picture here. Uh, just going to the end of the year there. So let's have a look just at the end of the year. Uh, so we've got this, this candle coming out now. And this is actually the la the biggest candle left at the moment, at least. Uh, obviously, if most of this restates, as it typically does, uh, we'll probably just see it pop back up over here, all this breaking up. We've got, uh, on the 23rd, we've got 332 million hex. On the 1st of November, we've got 391 million hex at the moment. We've got some slightly smaller candles under 300 there as well. Uh, probably about three or four other candles there at 300, under 300 million. Then on the 1st of December, the day before the hex third birthday, we've got 343 million hex there coming out. So that's kind of the uh, the staking view there. And, of course, we haven't, uh, with the price holding where it is at the moment, we haven't seen a lot of that selling. Uh, obviously, it's a, a tussle between buyers and sellers kind of where we are at this stage. So that's pretty much that. We're going to get the Hex Daily stats later on and have a look at the results um, for uh, day 1049. So stay tuned for that later on as well. All right, so let's uh, we're going to just skip into Pulse Chain. And of course, uh, we had some really awesome updates from Richard around that. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, bodes well for the future. Uh, so we're going to talk about that now too. Uh, let's see who else. We've got a couple other, uh, couple other comments in here. So let's have a look. Uh, uh, let me jump through here. Uh, just jump through some of these comments here. We've got Ted Nelson in the house. Hey, Ted, good to see you. Hey, everybody, I'm late again. Hey, good to see you in the chat there. And uh, Ancient Kushite in the house here. Time to get some hex. Yeah, um, the hex price is looking pretty juicy, folks. And uh, great, great entry there on the hex ecosystem. Uh, so looking good. 3.1 cents there. Very nice indeed. All right, let's jump over to... Uh, no, we're not jumping there yet. That's too quick. Let's go to Pulse Chain. That's where we are at the moment. And so let's check this out. Obviously, uh, looking to fork Ethereum proof of stake. And of course, Richard gave us an um, alpha update. So let's check that out uh, from Richard. Let me just get, uh, maybe get rid of that one there. And I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit here. Um, and bam. And let's get rid of that. And play this out. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go. Like basically, the devs are just, we're going to massage up the throughput a little bit. And we're going to massage up the gas a little bit, and it should be fine because we've got lower. Like, uh, just remember that uh, I, the audio here is sped up, um, so uh, if you are watching it on my other upload, you can just slow the video down um, and on using the cogs on the bottom right there. Uh, I listen to these things really fast because I've got to process a lot of information, so I've got to take take it off when I recorded it. Um, so just take that into account. Just we're going to massage up the throughput a little bit, and we're going to massage up the gas a little bit. And it should be fine because we've got a lower like load anyway. And then we're going to burn 25% of the fees net so that you have much more burn than Ethereum has. And then I'll feel very happy. Everyone gets to do coins, higher throughput, yeah. cheaper fees, you know, valid and secure consensus network is audited as exists in the world, you know, and that's where we're at. And the good thing is our code, like, you know, because the merge didn't, it only changed part. It's the merge offloaded certain parts of what Geth used to do to another EXE. And so like now when you're an ETH miner, you're a validator, you run two EXEs, you run Geth and you run this other one. And so because it's isolated in that way, all of our code for like handling injecting system state, is still valid. So that's great. So, so this, you would, you would think that it would like make it longer to market because you're switching to ETH 2.0, but it actually makes it shorter to market. 
because mm. those, those audits are done and that consensus network is working live. And, but so you know, the test net, which is live live now, that's still a that's fork using of BS, That's still Yes, correct. Right, and right. the V3 and test that, net that you're going to see come up is going to be a fork of the, the real mainnet Ethereum. Yeah, and, and there you so, will massage the throughput. You're going to increase yeah. the burn of each we'll uh, fee. Exactly. So we're going to burn the 20. So whatever you would have received as a validator, we're going to burn 25% of that. Now, I need to make sure there's no little edge cases because it's, it's a little bit complicated, all this stuff, right, with slashing and everything. So I just have to make sure there's no edge cases, but like the general theme of we're just going to burn 25% of whatever you would receive net, yeah. and that's going to reduce supply. It's, it's pretty valid, and I, I hope we don't run any edge cases with it. And what kind of uh, improvement do you think it will be in comparison to ETH when it comes to... I would, I would just start, I would start at really minimalist with it. I mean, I would even be okay with not even... Like, you should be able to do a 10% bump. You re really should. Because it's, it's le the network's less loaded anyway because there's less users on it. So you should be able to bump the gas 10% and lower the transaction block time 10%. And those two will compound to like an 11% gain. Or no, like more than that. I think it's like a 21% gain. And so you'll have a 21% like higher throughput, but you'll have like infinitely lower costs because the majority of the lower cost comes from just having less users to start with. So, you know, this, this idea that you need to increase throughput and lower block times to get lower costs is a little silly when like 99% of your lower cost is from just having less users. If you had the same number of users, then those would matter a lot. But if you have like 10x or 100x less users, those numbers don't matter as much. Yeah, but users come quickly. We, we saw it with oh. Binance Chain, for example. They come very quickly. Yep. All the yep. bots, all the as soon as people start, there's now infinite amount of arbitrage. And if it's low, low fees, then you can do it more efficiently and yep. you can act on more arbitrage. So the fees, as, as long as there is some activity well, and some trading. Well, that's the thing is like, I, I think that it's, I think it almost might be, a, so because of those things that you just said, it kind of defeats the idea that higher throughput equals lower fees. Because those ARB bots will just suck up the extra space, right. making their ARBs a little bit more efficient. So like, like this idea that you're going to get lower fees with more space, you're like, yeah, a little. But the ARB bots fight it. Like they, they suck that space up with like stupid other stuff. I mean, there's right. got to be a lot of interest from centralized exchanges. Is, is that something I mean, that... Like OKX wants to list it. Um, and I'm sure other exchanges want to list it too. They just want to see it in the real world. And especially in the bear market. You know, During the bear market, these guys are laying off staff left and right, yes. doing anything they can to generate volume because they're, they're, they're losing money every day. They're making money, they're losing money. Uh, we have Enchanted again asking about the uh, consensus and if I want to be a validator, can I can I delegate or I, I need to... It's, it's different now. So it, it's you're not the delegation stuff, while awesome, and it has some upsides because it removes that uh, having to have 32E thing and like having to give some keys to somebody else and like having to run a server and all that stuff. We're not going to have that now. And there's probably some guys that like were set up servers and, and ready to do that that just they're going to have to find someone else to do that hardware right now because we're going to use the same consensus method that Ethereum 2.0 uses currently. So it, it, it's just better. Yeah, and... and in ETH, you have, uh, you have uh, I don't remember what's called, but you have these contracts that can pull together ETH and they can yeah. stay there. We, if people are smart, they can buy down the, the central counterparty risk using those methods you're talking about. But look, I'm not an expert on those, so I don't know whether they're really fake decentralized or real decentralized. You know? I hope they're really decentralized, but I've seen so much fake garbage in crypto that I'd have to look specifically into it. I want to get the market, right? Like, I don't want to dick around with like changing parameters or adding features. I want to get to market. Like, even if we get to market without massaging the gas and the, and the block timing, if they're so easy, I think we can just do that. But if they weren't easy, I would just go straight copy and fix it later. Straight copy, fix it later. Let's go. Get the market. Let's go. Free coins. Free coins. Cheaper. Let's go. Free coins and cheaper is enough. Faster, mm -hmm. great if you have it. But it's not mandatory. Like, exact time in the chat asks about the stablecoin value on Pulse. And well, if they the are USDC, bridged... USDC and, USDT can, USDC and USDT can invalidate all of the stablecoins on any fork because they have an admin key. But they didn't choose to do that on the ETHW fork. So, cool. Um... I think that the most commonly used stablecoin is going to be a bridge in stablecoin until they launch a native version on the chain. So you can get native uh, USDC on Tron, you can get it on Ethereum, you can get it on AVAX, I think. So like there's other chains that have native issued stablecoins. They just care that there's a working consensus network in users, I think. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw native stable issued on Pulse from the same guys that have issued them on other chains. Yeah, they issue it on Tron, they issue it on all kinds of chains. So it would make nope. sense that they also nope. expand as Pulse chain gets, gets traction. But what we will see from the beginning are all the copy, copied ones. What's the game theory going to be, do you think, with, with uh, stable coins? I, I really don't know. I, I don't know. I think, I think that they'll have lo much lower value than the ones that are redeemable for real money. I think probably people will empty them for things that have more community traction. So you'll probably see people, I mean, look, my guess is you'd see people dump a lot of uh, stables for, or copied stables on the Pulse chain. I think you'd see them dump for stuff that has probably traction like Pulse, Pulse X, and Tex. Because like, my guess is that those three coins in the beginning will have the largest communities just because I invented it and I also invented X. And so like all of those dudes that already kind of know me and my stuff, are, they would probably rather be in the stuff they like than in the stuff that 
they don't care about. So like, that's my guess. My, my guess is that you'll see people dump uh, coins that don't have great adoption for coins that do. And then maybe if there's like great price or opportunities from like things just being underpriced. Because like at some point, like my, my gut feeling is that same code, same ticker symbol, price of link goes up on the hex chain, probably price of link goes up on the false chain. My guess. Same code, same ticker. After maybe they flop around a while, maybe they start to move together at some ratio, you know? Just like, look, why, why is Ethereum moving around with Bitcoin? They do. Why is Bitcoin moving around with the stocks? They do. And so stuff tends to like move around with other stuff that's like similar. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw tickers on false chain move around with more volatility than there, as a leverage position as the tickers on uh, Ethereum. Except for like straight failures. Like if you have an admin key coin that just like uses their admin key to nuke a chain. And then you shouldn't be participating in that anyway, should you? Like, should you be participating in coins that have admin keys? It's not the greatest idea, you know, like any, this one guy can come and take all your money whenever he wants. It sucks. I would avoid that if at all possible. So someone was asking about the snapshot of the state. And uh, is that going to be at some date in the future when there's yep. no clarity on the tech yep. or you have some date? It's a real fork. It's going to be a real fork. So there's some delay, there's some lag because it takes time to write to the database, but we'll probably announce a block height within a you know, couple day window probably. I'm just guessing on that. Because like, you just want to make sure no one can game anything by like knowing the timing. So... People don't need to know an exact time, I don't think. A, a range of times would be fine. It would even be fine if we didn't announce the time at all, I think. But, you know, I think for some people, they'd like to know a time. So I'd probably give them, like, in this range, we're trying to launch kind of thing, you know? Makes sense. Because maybe they want more of this one thing copied and, you know. Because, like, look, if you have your coins in a centralized exchange, you're not getting the copies there. I hate centralized exchanges. So, like, it'd be better if you put the coins in your own wallet and got copies yourself instead of giving that value for free away to the exchange that doxes you, makes you big for your own money, et cetera. I hate exchanges, dude. I hate them. How much will I need in order to Same. stake? 32. Same. I don't see a reason to change that. Does it have to be connected we're trying to... to... Change as few, we're trying to change as few parameters as possible. They're known working good. I don't want to change anything if I don't have to. Well, does it have to be connected to the dollar value that it's... Or it, nope. it doesn't matter if it's $1 or 30 cents or... Well, you can, you can never tie it to a dollar value or you have Oracle problem. Central point of failure. It's scumbaggery. So it has to be native currency only, 32 ETH. So can never, in, in no blockchain can you ever tie something to a real dollar amount where you are a slave to whoever runs the server that tells you what a dollar's worth forever. I don't like that. Yeah, that's, like if need, reliable. that's if you need real time. But do you think they, when ETH picked 32, why 32? They probably looked know. at how much one ETH is worth, that it should be not a million dollars, but and, but also not like five cents. Or is it fully disconnected? Well, I hope that's not how they did it. Because if that is how they did it, then I should change that number. I could go back and look at the EIPs and see like their logic on it. We could go and discover what their logic was on that. But I'd really rather just copy known good working things because like you would actually prefer it to be cheaper and, and it supports millions of validators out of the box so like i'll give it a night of thought is but like what are the we're not going to have a million validators off the bat we're not gonna have a million users off the bat it'll take a while you know like you can always fix it later too like we know it works now let's run with it let's go we know it works now if we start to get hiccups or any kind of weirdness we'll fix it Franklin says, Richard, I used to work at Circle. They won't add USDC to Pulse Chain unless they're able to KYC heavily. All the chains, with the exception of ETH, are centralized heavily. If you want to... So KYC want me, to what do I give a fuck? You think I've never KYC'd before? Come get my docs, bro. I don't care. I've KYC'd before. <laughs> you think I bought the fucking world's largest diamond without KYCing, bro? I didn't. But like, it really should hit 10 through 50. Really, really, Nicole really. Is asking, Nicole is asking if we're going to do 1,000x in the first 300 days, 65 days. How do I know? Do I have a crystal ball? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. Nobody does. It's not knowable. It could do something crazy, sure, but nobody knows what the probability of it is actually happening. What about? I mean, look, launching a bear makes it more likely, right? Like launching a bear makes it easier to go up more. Uh, someone asked about Pulse X, and uh, if there are any changes to liquidity incentivization, Inc let's see, are there any updates on economics for the incentive token for LP? No. On Pulse X. Nope. No updates. You're gonna, you know, there'll be rewards if you like them. Cool. If you don't, whatever. That's the black, the black sheep token. That's the token I care the least about. I care, Sorry, about, Pulse, Pulse I care about Pulse X, the incentive token. The incentive ah, okay. token that has not a name. <laughs> okay. have a fucking name. That's how much I care about it. So, like, you know, it'll get a name. People will probably want it. Maybe they'll have a dog picture. Who knows? People like dog pictures. <laughs> I care the least That's about that token. Probably. And Chuck, that's small says... updates. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. small updates. That's what she said. Small updates would be really appreciated. Even if it's a tweet saying that's still working. Can't wait for testing. Oh, God, dude. Okay, duly noted, man. I just got I got so burnt out about it when you guys scavenged me from that one time estimate was given. And like I got punished for that. I didn't deserve you punished for that. I'm, I'm really I'm jaded now. Like I don't want to tell you guys nothing now. Because you like were so mean about that. I'm like, damn. Okay, well I just won't tell you anything then. Like you don't need to know nothing. I don't work for you. What's done was done.
Uh, I've done the audio again. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I've got the mute back off there, just the way it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I think that was a pretty good update from Richard uh, there on with Ivan on Tech. And of course, you can see the short form video on there. Now, if you want to slow down the speed, you can hit the little clog, clog button below the video and you can slow the speed down uh, slightly. So down to 75 if you want like that. Now, I did record it super fast because I was listening to it. That, that's what I normally listen to it at. Um, so, yeah, just the way it goes, and I've got to turn it off. So, uh, cool. Really cool update, though, from Richard. Uh, now, uh, Tom Boss says, so uh, that means no more validators on Pulse, just have 32 Pulse to stake. Uh, that's kind of the indication from that. So uh, if he's going to stick with that, I don't know. Uh, if we were going to equalize 32 ETH, that would probably be about 38 billion uh, Pulse. So uh, let's see where we uh, where we head with that. But uh, 32 Pulse seems to be the case. I think we need a bit here, here, here more from him at the time. Um, so uh, let's, let's uh, have a question mark over that uh, moving forward, I think, on that one. Uh, what else there? Stable coins, yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought Richard uh, kind of underplayed the stable coins. Uh, we are going to have, I've done a video on that, of course, uh, USDL, uh, CST, um, BankX, and there's another one as well uh, that uh, looks like might be native. Now, a lot of these won't, uh, well, at least uh, USDL won't launch till probably four to six weeks after uh, Pulse Chain. Um, but I'm um, pretty excited uh, Pretty excited for uh, all the stable coins. We need stable coins big time. Uh, they are huge for DeFi, uh, GameFi, whatever else we're going to have on there. So really bullish on that one. Um, so, yeah, that was underplayed on the video discussion. So I think that was pretty cool. Hey, we've got George in the house here. What's up, guys? Good to see you, George. Tell Seven says, I'm amazed Hex hasn't jumped to 4.5 cents from this interview. Hey, look, there's a few things that haven't really, in my view, uh, moved the price. Um, and I don't talk about them all on this channel. Um, but uh, there is a couple of things that uh, you would think would move the price that haven't moved the price. Obviously, we've got a, uh, um, the current environment. We've also, you know, in terms of the market, uh, bear, and we've also got uh, buyers versus sellers competing against each other. Uh, what we haven't seen, though, is a lot of uh, big OG sellers lately, um, so or large holders, sellers, um, as much as we have. But, of course, uh, we do see interest scraping and things like that from the short stakers as they come to you. We've got a few bit of a battle going on there, but of course it is a uh, buyer's opportunity if you compare it to the all-time high. Um, so still a dollar cost averaging approach. It seems pretty good. And I think we are still in accumulation phase, even if we have a work down in November, maybe if the market uh, capitulates. Uh, but of course, Richard's been pretty optimistic about uh, you know uh, the potentially hex moving against the market uh, at some stage in the future. So uh, yeah, we're still holding out for that. But uh, yep. Uh, the interview was so good, you thought uh, it might do that. It hasn't. There's a couple of other things out there that you might have thought have moved the price as well. Uh, I would and probably include outrage marketing there as well. Uh, that I don't think that's done as well. But, of course, uh, you then have to take uh, – you always have to adjust that for saying what happens if you never had that, right? So that's the other thing. If you can't actually tag uh, each buy and sell, you don't really know. So you're kind of speculating on that as well. Uh, Brendan's in the house there. I'm fine with a low value hex on ETH before fork. Makes arbing a price a lot quicker possible, says Brennan. Good point. It definitely won't take a while to hit a million users. That's the other thing I thought. Uh, I thought, uh, man, we're going to smash out uh, high numbers, I think, very quickly uh, in the first uh, couple of months. Um, and I won't be surprised at, at that. All all uh, seven uh, tokenomics and uh, everything else looks pretty good. Community is pretty big, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I, I'd like to think, uh, you know, well, I don't know. Um, in terms of transactions per day, I prefer to look at it like that. Users, you've got users, number of users, got number of transactions per day. I think we'll be pretty excited uh, with the number of transactions we get per day. Uh, obviously, uh, we've got to uh, you know address the uh, uh, the bots, of course, with the with the spare room, and we'll see how that goes too. Um, what else? There we've got uh, refines in house. What's up, man? Woo! -hoo! Good to see you refined. And we've got Hanson as well. As well, good to see you, Hanson. Uh, why is everybody saying Pulse Chain launch tomorrow? I don't know. If any, I've never heard anyone say that, DX. Um, and what else? Yeah, I muted. Unfortunately, I muted myself. Um, what else there? We got uh, just made my first YouTube video on my Xentrez. Is Ryan. That's one there, Ryan. And uh, please don't too sh shill too much with the with the gaps here. All right, cool. All right, sweet. sweet. Let's uh, jump into it. And uh, that's our Pulse Chain update. And I thought it was pretty juicy from Richard. Really, really cool. We want It would be nice to get... Uh, a uh, bit more updates. Hopefully he will every now and then. Um, and, of course, we are expecting a V3 uh, testnet. And then, of course, uh, that's to both ideally uh, being short and tight. Um, and, of course, uh, we're looking forward to uh, the Pulse Chain. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We're just going to play it as, as, as it comes, really. All right, let's get into uh, my Spotlight project, uh, which is a BNB pot. 
Uh, and this chart looked good or what? So this chart has good market fit. Uh, this is the world's first peer-to-peer -peer crypto casino. Uh, the world's first peer-to-peer -peer crypto casino. Uh, this is different, obviously, from Hex, which is a savings product. Uh, this is a speculative product. And, of course, it's targeting a different market. Uh, it's, you know, people that like uh, casinos, gambling, um, uh, iGaming, things like that. Uh, but look at this chart. It's going to be amazing. Now, this is launching on multiple chains, too. The first launch is on a BSC. Uh, and, of course, it will be launching on uh, Pulse Chain uh, and uh, uh, Polygon, I believe, and Phantom and I think uh, uh, Aave. I think those are the chains, if I remember rightly. Uh, at the moment, of course, look at this chart. Beautiful, beautiful. And, of course, we're going to check out some of the details there. Now, you can find details on this one in Spotlight Projects. If you go to Useful Projects, uh, Useful Links on our Discord, uh, you can join the Discord and the link in the video description. And, of course, I've got Spotlight Project there for BNB Pop there. Uh, you can join, uh, uh, go to the site here and stake there if you want to buy and stake. Uh, you also got the price here as well. And, of course, my video on BNB Pumper Mentals are insanely epic. And that's no joke. You know, that video, uh, I think, is the best summary of the Pump Mentals out there. And uh, it is incredible, folks, uh, the Pump Mentals. This thing has been designed very, very well. I consider Jacob one of the very best uh, 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 devs out there. We talk about uh, a dip, uh, a dip catcher a lot. We talk about... Uh, Alex McFurda, he's, you know, this is the uh, really, really amazing. In fact, he's probably even another level above that from a mathematical point of view. Um, so it's pretty, pretty intense. I mean, these guys are very clever. Uh, and of course, this has been designed amazingly. The gamification's got the best of everything uh, from players incentives uh, to uh, promoter incentives to um, staker incentives. This thing's got the whole bundle and uh, pretty exciting. Now, the one caveat, of course, is that oh, that's all designed for success. And it's better than uh, any other project out there that I can see. Uh, the other thing, of course, is it's designed to get volume. Now, volume, obviously, you can still design things to be the best in the world, but you're still going to get volume through. And I do think it's going to be very successful from that point of view. Uh, but that is the one caveat. You're still going to get the volume through. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. I think there's a lot of uh, YouTubers out there now uh, covering it. And, of course, um, I think there might be up to a dozen. Uh, and that could possibly include... Uh, I haven't seen any videos recently, but possibly anyone from Fashion Coder uh, through to Corey Costa, Jim Rack Crypto, obviously Hex Token, um, um, uh, Black Hexagon, people like that. There's lots, lots out there uh, talking about this project. Very excited about it. Uh, so very cool. That is pretty much that on there. And the price is looking pretty good. Look at that. Looking really nice formation here. Now, obviously, the game uh, platform is uh, BNB Pot. And, of course, uh, there is a countdown at the moment, uh, two days. Uh, two days. Let's just refresh this, make sure it's up to date. Two days and 23 hours to go until it launches with its first game. Now, it's going to staggered launch. Um, so it's going to be launching the jackpot, which I believe is a world's first. I don't know if I've seen it anywhere else. And uh, it's going to be pretty fun uh, jackpot there. So basically, people enter the jackpot uh, with crypto, and it's, they have a percentage chance of winning. So if you put in 20% uh, of the, the pot, you're going to have 20% chance of winning. But in addition to that, not only do you win the pot if you win, uh, but you also, uh, they've got a 100,000 BNBP, which they've allocated uh, for the BSC chain. Remember, they're going to be launching this on every single chain. There was a big sacrifice. I think it's the fourth biggest sacrifice uh, out of all the projects. So people recognized its awesomeness at the beginning, uh, but it's only just got better from there. Like, I reckon it's got 10, 10x better and uh, once they came out with all the details. Uh, so pretty exciting from that point of view. Now, they are very, although they've done all of the maths, they've done a lot of the co coding, they've done the audits, uh, they really are focused on the front-end UI to make that really exciting for people. And so they're going to be improving that all the time as well. Uh, so we're looking forward to that when it launches. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. And, of course, two hours and 23 minutes to go. Very, very nice. And the chart is looking great. So uh, looking awesome here. Now, obviously, uh, the price launched at $5 is up at $21. Uh, but, of course, if you had sacrificed, um, then, you know, originally it was about $5. I think the cheapest would have been, uh, you know, taking that down to about 70, 80 cents. And, of course, on each chain, because there's five chains going to be launched, uh, then, you know, that's a massive X return there. So uh, very, very exciting indeed. You know, over 20X, uh, depending on, uh, you know, what you got, what your uh, sacrifice cost was. Very exciting. And that's just on the first chain. Obviously, going to be coming to Pulse Chain. And, of course, if it has all these products rolled out before Pulse Chain and then launches on Pulse Chain, it's going to be so exciting, folks. Now, Pulse Chain is the next uh, the chain that they want to target. But, of course, Pulse Chain has to launch, right? So that's kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing some of these top-tier projects, either utility projects uh, or, in particular, these top uh, um, uh, speculative projects, which are 
Uh, this one here is separated. So there's a lot of spec projects, but this one here is on, out on its own. It's uh, uh, it's really uh, the world's first truly uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer crypto casino. No one's done this. This is really a first, and uh, we're going to see this. going to be amazing. Um, so uh, it's going to be fun to see, watch this project. A uh, real DeFi, real market fit. Very exciting. $21 at the moment. I suspect that we may get another run up here um, to the target price. I've got that in yellow. I don't know if even I've shown this on the screen here before. Uh, but that there is the uh, $30 player price on the actual platform when it goes live. So even if the price is, say this other price is $10 in the market, uh, when you go to play on uh, BNB Pot, it's going to be worth $30. It's going to be worth $30 on here. Um, so uh, it kind of gives that feedback loop in terms of going up. Now, if the market price gets to $40, um, then it's going to go up. The uh, BNB price will go up by 10%. So on here, if you're playing with a $40 market price, it's worth $44. Uh, on the BNB pot. So it's always going to go up by 10%, uh, which is pretty pretty interesting there for that. Uh, it's got more, so many pump mentors, so many uh, that I can't talk about it, but check out my video on here. You'll be really impressed by the design. Anyway, so let's get into how much is staked at the moment. Uh, so the stake percentage at the moment is uh, 66%, but if you include the team's liquid wallet, uh, then that takes it up to uh, 71%. And of course, we've got uh, just another three days to go. I'm expecting to see a jump up and staking even higher. Uh, if this wasn't already good enough, you're going to see uh, probably a lot higher staking in, in the last couple of days as people FOMO in uh, because you get share of the profits on the platform and it's a pretty amazing, right? So uh, let's have a look at the participation phase. Uh, let's go to the uh, tokenomics here, the tokenomics. Uh, you'll see that uh, every month uh, the stakers will get 75% of the uh, profits now the profits are taken from uh, something between one half to three percent of the fees of uh, the players and of course uh, so that's how that's going to play out and of course from the wins there and so all decentralized games on bnb pot take a small percentage fee from the winner uh, so which is between one half and three percent depending on whether they're holding bnbp and that's going to be a monthly airdrop and of course casinos are particularly lucrative so if we get good volume through uh, we could have some pretty exciting uh, ap apys there uh, okay, pretty interesting. Now, obviously, 20% also goes to the daily buy and burn. And we talk about PulseX all the time because PulseX is going to have a buy and burn. And that's going to be one of probably one of the, if not the pivotal uh, standout uh, feature of the Pulse Chain launch uh, is uh, the buy and burn and PulseX. Not only for PulseX or PLSX itself, but also for the chain as well. And the ecosystem, broader ecosystem, uh, when the AMM bot runs there and does the ratio trading, ratio uh, rating and setting up liquidity pools, does a pretty big deal. Uh, so that's going to be buy and burn. So not only is it just burning, but it's buying and burning. Uh, so that mechanism every single day uh, from the profit. So the volume comes in, uh, you're going to have the, the amount of tokens, but it's even better than that, folks. If you've got 71% at the moment, it's probably going to be higher. If you've got the, the team wallet doesn't sell anymore or something like that or doesn't move any, any around, then you've got, uh, you've got the fact that you've got less than, what, about 270,000 tokens uh, that are going to be slowly buy and burn. These are circulating tokens at the moment. They're going to get more uh, bought up and burned. And so uh, this the, the people will be staked. A minimum stake period is 100 days. And so every, all that circling stuff is going to slowly get eaten up by the market buyers and the uh, and the volume that gets played through the, the casino. Very clever. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Now, if you are holding BNBP, you're not staking it, you're not uh, doing anything, uh, then there is a 5% lottery as well. Uh, and that could be a nice surprise for some people. And that's a weekly lottery there. So uh, that could be pretty interesting. Uh, you, every BNBP you have uh, is like one you know, a lotto ticket. So I think that's going to be pretty profound. So pretty exciting there. And as I say, the BNB price will have $30 minimum. And of course, the fees there, uh, if you're holding, if you're playing uh, fees there, you get a 3 a three to 1.5%, depending on how many BNP you have in your wallet. Uh, there is 100,000 100, that's going to be uh, given out to gamers as well, but they don't get this until the last one has been won. So uh, for every uh, one BNB bonus, uh, one BNB bonus is added into every pot. Now the pots run for five minutes. And of course, every time they're going to have one, every $100 goes in the pot, there's another BNB P added with a maximum of 50 BNB P tokens. And of course, uh, these don't get distributed until the last one has been won. So that could be, uh, what, six weeks, could be three months. Uh, we'll find out. It really depends on the volume going through. So this is the first one that's going to be launching the jackpot. Uh, the second game is going to be the roulette. That's all done, apparently. Uh, the maths, the coding, the audits, the front end. Uh, so roulette's coming. And, of course, they're not giving us the release date, but maybe uh, three or four weeks after something like that, maybe four weeks at the latest is probably where they'll release the roulette. So we're going to get the jackpot first. 
which I think is pretty exciting just by itself. But then the roulette tables, we've seen all the NFTs that have been won. Pretty amazing, uh, the NFTs. And, of course, people get to own the house. They get to own the tables. Pretty awesome. And the jackpot, of course, is just peer-to-peer. Uh, so it's just play- between player and, and and players. So uh, there's no middle house. There's no middleman. And, of course, uh, pretty cool. Uh, then after that, we're going to have the fortune wheels. Which we've seen the auctions for those. I think that's probably got a little bit more work to do, but that's coming out then after that. Then we have price scores, uh, then sports, and, of course, uh, slot slot games after that. And then potentially we might see some table games. Uh, people have also talked about the potential for bingo as well, uh, which is a huge, huge game. Um, so it's going to be fun to see that. Now, obviously, we've got players that get benefits. Uh, we've just talked about that in terms of the game incentives, in terms of holding BNBP for cheaper fees. Uh, and, of course, being part of that weekly lottery, right? Pete, that weekly lottery is pretty cool. Stakers get benefits. They get massive share of the profits. Uh, and, of course, that's pretty exciting. Plus the buy and burn, which is up to 95% uh, when you add those two together. Uh, we also see, obviously, price appreciation. We also see the $30 platform thing. And then on tours, of course, so those are stakers and players. But then, of course, promoters. How do you promote a project consistently while well, there's a referral program? Uh, and you get to win. If you refer people and they win, uh, in these games on the pot, jackpot, then you get 10% uh, of the profits there. So uh, amazing mechanism, uh, dynamic. The big thing about this too, if you think about inflationary tokens, the you, you get paid inflation out of the inflation, but here this is a business. So you get that the money is outside the platform. It's coming in as player uh, volume. And so there's no uh, inflation. It's just deflation in this project uh, from money that's coming in uh, from people that like to do this. this is what they like to do. They like to play these games. Uh, they like to have the chance of winning big, uh, but of course they have the chance of losing too. So this is the way it goes. And of course, that's the market. So uh, very, very cool. Um, and uh, looking forward to this. Now, there was an update video uh, from the founder, Jacob, on Black Hexkin, who covered this. I didn't even know Black Hexkin was covering this project, uh, but uh, she came out with this Twitter space uh, and uh, and put it on YouTube as well. So you can uh, definitely check that out on Black Hexkin. Um, I might post the video to that. I think it's up here somewhere. Uh, if you want to check out the latest from Jacob the Dev. And like I say, we've only got three weeks to go. Very exciting. This is my spotlight project at the moment. And I hope you guys enjoyed that coverage. Uh, so let me uh, let me put that in there. Now remember, these guys are going to be launching on Pol- uh, They're planning on launching on Pulse Chain next. Uh, they wanted to launch on it first, of course. Um, but of course, Pulse Chain is not out yet. So uh, this is what some decisions that people are having um, is uh, to make. And of course, uh, Jacob did say on the, on the live stream here with Black Hexkin, that uh, they may, um, they want to launch on Pulse Chain Net, but if Pulse Chain's not out by the time they expect, they may launch on another chain first. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see that. Uh, so yeah, pretty exciting. Uh, this is the most successful sacrifice so far uh, because, uh, you know, people, this is the first project that uh, has really, uh, people have got uh, huge rewards out of this. Uh, so very successful. And it's, def- it's, got, it's basically uh, got everything that defines a great successful project. And uh, yeah, very exciting. So uh, yeah, people that and a lot of the other sacrifices, people having to wait, even the very good ones uh, like uh, Power City, they're having to wait for that to launch. And that's one of the very best ones. Uh, Liquid Loans, one of the very best ones. People have to wait. Um, but with BNB, uh, they very nice move here. And uh, people that sacrificed are, are very happy indeed. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's got a bright future uh, on this as well. So very exciting. Uh, looking forward to the launch in only a couple of days. Uh, so that's pretty much my coverage there of uh, the BNB pot. I'll be covering this, you know, most days uh, moving ahead. It's uh, obviously a spotlight project for me. And, of course, I, you know, look at good value, good value there. All right, so cool. Uh, so we've got, what, let's do a summary of things that are going on at the moment. Uh, I think that Hex is a nice and a nice accumulation phase. Uh, obviously, the ultimate savings product on the planet. And, of course, if you get Hex at the moment, you're going to get a copy on Pulse Chain. Uh, so that's exciting too. So you're getting a two for one deal, which is what one and a half cents approximately, just over one and a half cents at uh, the current price. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, we've got uh, Hedron is the, the net first probable play. And of course, uh, that's at three, four, eight, eight. And of course, uh, less than a month away uh, to the massive HSI uh, um, uh, auctions, uh, massive Hedron burn, massive Icosa inflation. So if you're staking Icosa, uh, staking Hedron, st- if you've got Watson NFTs, then you're going to reap uh, the big payday, as I call it, for the fortnight. I call it the big fortnight payday. Uh, but particularly on that first day, uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, the other thing, of course, we've also talked about the second probability play at the moment, which is a PLSD, and that price is moving pretty much as expected, $6.24. It's actually uh, easing a bit nice, and we may see Pulse Bitcoin there launch within the next week. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. So uh, looking good there. 
Uh, I need to move my plane a bit higher. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And of course, uh, the all-time high was $9.53 for this and currently $6.24. The other thing, of course, is we've talked about BNB pot, uh, which is my speculative play. But it's uh, when I say that, it has the very best gamification that I've seen uh, in a project. Very, very cool. But it is speculative. And that, the reason why I use those terms is because I just want you to understand the risk-reward trade-off. And of course, nothing on this channel is investment advice. Obviously, I review a lot of projects on Pulse Chain, uh, but I only like to talk about the good ones, the ones I see that are good. Uh, you see there's, there's uh, 120 projects. How many do you see me talking about? Hardly any of them. I talk about maybe the top top 10. Um, so uh, there we are. That's pretty much it. So uh, nice. There are a lot of crappy ones out there. I just don't talk about them. Now, I will mention the name, of course, because as you talk about projects, you're going to talk about, read a name. You're going to say, well, there's that name, that name, that name. Uh, but that, of course, I'm not talking about them. So uh, just take them into account. Now, the other thing, of course, we want to onboard a lot of people from other communities, uh, whether you like the project or not, into the Pulse Chain community. Uh, you know, uh, since Richard Hart's going to fork Ethereum, uh, sorry, fork Ethereum, uh, you know, he's the one that introduced all these projects. So uh, we're talking about them. We want to onboard it. We want Pulse Chain to be super successful. Uh, we want to uh, help people that are, uh, you know, excited about projects that maybe are not that great. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're not that great. And we want to bring them into Pulse Chain because it's going to be the very best of crypto. Um, so if you're wondering why quite a few YouTubers and stuff are talking about other projects, uh, that is really the context that you're thinking about. Um, and, of course, uh, reaching out. And, of course, once we, uh, you know, pick a lot of new people that are new to crypto, uh, they come to our Discord and uh, they get a lot of educational tools and help to onboard um, and, of course, to find out what's really is a good project and what's not. So uh, there we are. That's uh, kind of a lead there. Um, so it's going to be fun. We want to uh, obviously help people and uh, get them into the better project. Richard Hart's tokens are the golden uh, cryptos of uh, of in, in, in the world at the moment. And of course, when Pulse Chain launches, everybody's going to see uh, the, uh, I guess, the harvest of that. Uh, when um, uh, Pulse X is up and running with the big buy and burn, you know, a billion dollars of trade volume through there is $700,000 of buy and burn a day. Um, and of course, even if we start off with 10% of that, it's going to be a pretty amazing, you know, $70,000 of buy and burn a day. It's going to be pretty amazing. And of course, we're expecting that ramp up. Now, I'm expecting pretty exciting things for Pulse Chain, obviously, um, once we get that that network up and running. I'm actually pretty happy that we're doing a proof of stake uh, because we're going to have the upgradability of uh, uh, SK rollups and sharding, uh, the increasing of the TPS. Remember, uh, Vitalik was targeting 100,000 TPS, uh, and maybe we're looking at, uh, what's it, 23, 24, possibly for that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, we're excited about it. The other thing, of course, uh, we also will have control potentially over the S-load function, it uh, be interesting to see what Richard does with that, with the uh, hex end stakes. Uh, obviously, that's kind of the storage value there. Hex has to rot loop through uh, its stakes. Uh, so hopefully we'll have more control over that uh, because that was just to sort of almost arbitrarily, it seemed, uh, just lifted by the, uh, the the ETH team over there, um, just uh, I think eight or nine times, something like that. So uh, obviously that was just raising the, the, the cost for that, that function used. And so hopefully we'll be able to lower that on the uh, Pulse chain. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that uh, news on that one. And, of course, uh, yeah, we're going to have a massive ecosystem. There's going to be a lot of projects around, and a lot of people are going to be talking about different projects. If you, uh, That's just the way it is going to be. And once you fork a chain, you, you talk about all these projects, it's just the way it's going to be. But Richard Hart projects are going to be at the very top. If you think about Pulsex, if we have, say, five, six, 6,000 uh, actively traded peers on Pulsex, then they're all going to be going to buy and burn Pulsex, you know, one of Richard Hart's tokens. Uh, it's a genius move, or it's a genius move. And, of course, on, before that, of course, the AMM bot is going to pretty much uh, do some sort of ratio uh, adjustments and, of course, uh, set all those pools up for the ETH pools, you know. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. This is ge pure genius, and we're looking forward to it. We can't wait for it. And I'm really happy that uh, we've now got a simplified uh, fork now. Uh, you know, BSC was obviously causing issues with bugs and getting that across the line. It seemed Obviously, it seemed to be a challenge. And uh, now we've got a simplified version. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and so we're going to have a safer, fast chain, upgradable chain, and of course, potentially control over the S load function. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to bode well for, for Hex, uh, Pulse Chain, and Pulse Hex. And of course, I think the incentive token is going to do pretty well as well. Uh, if you've been in yield farming, you know the yield farmers move pretty fast to the biggest liquidity pools, what the AMM bot's going to help us do. And of course, we're going to have stable coins, potentially three or four native stable coins without even the need for uh, USDC, USD Tether, or uh, any of the other decentralized. Uh, tokens on other channels. We're going to have our own native ones. It's going to be very exciting. A fiat back one and an exogenous back one in USDL. It's really exciting. CS uh, 
Bank X may be a good wild card. They're looking to uh, do multiple chains. Now, I'm a little bit question mark over, over Bank X. Uh, they're kind of a hybrid between four different projects. Uh, and one of those one of those hybrids is a, a Terra Luna uh, a aspect to it, but that may they've made changes to that, so it may end up being a better model uh, than obviously that one, especially when it's got other components to it. We'll watch out what's that one, uh, but that's uh, probably the weakest out of the three. Um, and of course, we've got a fourth one that looks like it's coming too. Just I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, that's pretty exciting. And of course, uh, so we've got stable coins. We're going to have a DeFi. We're going to have the top lending platforms. We want those. Obviously, Fiat's going to be a fork of Aave. Um, liquid loans is a fork of liquidity. These, these are the better protocols that have been running and are valued accordingly by the market, uh, particularly after all the big ones fell from graceful essentialized ones in particular. Uh, and of course, that's a big ethos there. So very exciting, folks. Uh, we're also going to obviously have some pretty amazing NFT uh, platforms. Uh, you know, obviously Power City doing their one. Uh, Mitra, of course, out there. Oh, I think we're probably going to have at least four or five uh, native uh, NFT platforms. Um, and I think uh, they all look pretty good to me at least particularly four out of five of them look particularly good. And, of course, NFTs are going to flourish. So if you think we're talking about other projects now, uh, man, when NFTs come to the Pulse chain, it's going to be busy. Uh, people are going to be talking about other projects, and uh, I know some people get a bit sensitive about talking about other projects, but that's just what it is. As soon as Richard Hart forked Ethereum, uh, you bring all these projects on them. Whether the Richard Hart ones or not, Richard Hart's will be at the top. Uh, and, of course, uh, like I said, PulseX will feed through that value into there. It's kind of the big X returns that you're after. Uh, with the Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and of course that wealth effect, as I always talk about, uh, will flow into the Hex product, the best savings product on the planet. And uh, like I said to the yield farmers, will likely make the incentive token better than people expect. Um, and uh, I think that's going to be fun too. Uh, but we're going to have so many projects. NFTs are going to flood Pulse Chain. Uh, we're going to have tons and tons of them. And uh, yeah, get forward, look forward to that. I think Gen Hex might actually be interviewing somebody with NFT at the moment on his channel. But uh, it's going to be a big deal, folks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of projects. And, of course, we have to try and filter through all those uh, and talk about the quality ones, right? It's always about seeking that quality. Sometimes we talk about projects that aren't so hot, uh, but, of course, we're trying to uh, get the, the the users out of those projects and into the good projects. Uh, that's pretty much what we're trying to do. And, of course, you must do your own investment due diligence, ultimately. You must be responsible for your own choices, ultimately. Uh, but the more you get educated, uh, the, the cleverer you get, and uh, then the better off you will be. I like to break down crypto into two different things. One, of course, is uh, probability of, of, of doing well. And, of course, that takes a while to get understanding all the different types of projects out there. Do they have good market fit? Do they have a big community? Uh, do they have uh, good quality devs, honest devs, uh, things like that? So you've got to take that into account. And then the second thing, which is the hardest one, the second thing is the hardest one, timing. Uh, when is something actually going to launch, uh, whether it's a product on the platform, whether it's the platform itself, uh, when is the timing? That's the, that's the harder one. And, of course, uh, we've seen that with Pulse Chain. Um, you know, it was July 15th last year uh, that we had the sacrifice of Pulse Chain. Of course, here we are uh, almost up to Christmas time. Um, so uh, timing is difficult. Uh, Richard says that too. Software is difficult. Timing is difficult. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think that's kind of where we are. But I think things are turning, uh, looking br brighter, maybe into December. December, I know it seems like a, a month of hope in December. Uh, we'll obviously wait and see when we get to there. Uh, but I think definitely the think November may be not be so great. Uh, it's going to be a mixed bag because obviously we're going to he have the XHSIs. Uh, so I think that's going to be probably uh, pretty exciting. But I think the market could be under a lot of stress in the November. Uh, but then late, maybe at the end of November, things start to look up a bit. If we do get any of that capitulation in the stock market, the crypto market, uh, maybe the interest rate rise is uh, the last big one. Maybe 75 basis points. Maybe we start to turn a corner there. Uh, December, of course, uh, Hex birthday, highest of stakes. Uh, maybe V3 somewhere in here in this time frame and uh, maybe quick and short and tidy and then maybe straight into the launch possibly uh, and, uh, and maybe December, late December, January. Uh, January seems like a, a reasonable play at the moment, but of course a Christmas gift would be pretty nice. The other thing, of course, uh, some people have a later time frame. They have like a March or April, uh, thinking that there's still quite a bit of work there. Uh, Rumours of devs talking about uh, may possibly uh, connections as well. So we'll see how all that plays out. Uh, in the future but uh, yeah i think generally pretty good update from richard on uh, a hex soldiers show and of course a, a great update uh, even better update uh, 10x better update on the uh, ivan on tech show i thought that was pretty pretty cool um so yeah hopefully you guys have enjoyed that we've got an hour 26 we're coming up to hex daily stats so uh, let's check click through all that and uh let's see how we're getting on so day uh, i think we've got the latest day on I'm not sure if we have yet um, we've got one hour into it, so I'm not even sure we've got the latest day on there. 
Um, so day 148, can't remember if we talked about that yesterday. Uh, 16th. Um, oh, is that the latest one? Oh, let me just uh, make sure I got the uh, day 148. So 15th. I don't know if that's the, the case, actually. Uh, no, I don't think we've uh, got the day out there. I think we're on one 1049. We have to talk about that another day. All right, cool. We might have to miss out the Hex Daily Stats, but I'll, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't checked out Hex.com, folks, check out Hex.com. Check out PulseDate.com. It is coming. And, of course, if you want to get into our Discord to learn more, uh, get into Discord. The link's in the video description. And, of course, we have good information. That's what we try to do. Uh, we try to make it a safe place as possible for people to learn about crypto, particularly Rich at Heart projects. Of course, we've got the Rich Heart chat at the top. Uh, so you've got good information, good community. And, of course, uh, we've got Richard Hart tokens at the top there. We've got Pulse Chain projects down there, including the Spotlight projects and the Air, Airdrop Free Claims, uh, which we've got a couple coming up there, the Weight token, the Paul Pleb, and the Kira. Uh, we've got uh, Texan token at the moment, uh, which are doing their program. And, of course, they are trying to onboard up to a half a million uh, no coiners. Uh, that's the biggest project that's out there doing that. And, of course, our focus on our channel is one of the key focuses on our channel is onboarding for Pulse Chain. So, uh uh, we'll be going to be using a lot of different uh, mechanisms for that. Uh, and uh, we welcome everybody from other communities into the Pulse Chain. Uh, it's going to be amazing. You want to welcome people into the uh, into the best cryptos. You don't want to turn people away. There's no point in that, is there? So uh, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, let's jump over to the Hex price at the moment. And we've probably finished on that at this stage. Uh, so Hex looking pretty good uh, at the moment in accumulation phase. Let's check out some of the other comments in the chat. And uh, hopefully I wasn't muted the whole time. That'd be sad if I was muted. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Tell us says, much respect for the work, man. I really see your streams as the heart of this community outside of Richard. Says Tail Sevens. Hey, Tail Sevens, I appreciate that. Big shout out. And I think you see the big picture. That's so, so good. Uh, Sam and Hex and ESPs in the house there. Uh, going uh, going on golfing. A nice one, Sam. Man, you do, you are. I love how action, you're like action Jackson there, uh, Sam. We'll catch up later. Nice one. J-Man in the house as well. Good to see J-Man. And uh, Jay, everything in the house, 100%. Uh, George Tucker says, is that price still going on for BNB bot? No, that finished a little, quite a while ago. Um, in fact, we we can actually go to the stats for that uh, because we've got it on the old um, uh, X Pulse uh, info site. So we'll go to sacrifices. Um, it was some time ago. Uh, where was that one there? It was uh, called Pulse Bot. They're gonna, I think they're doing a name change. And of course, it's called BNB Pot on the BSC chain. So this was the when it had the Pulse Pot one. I'm not sure if they're going to keep that name uh, for Pulse Chain. I think they're going to be changing the name. Uh, but they got, uh, I think, the fourth best result at three and a half million dollars. Uh, so a lot of confidence. And this was before we knew uh, hardly anything about how amazing the gamification was. Just when we had the Pulse Pot game, uh, but now we know that this thing is a major player uh, in the space. So uh, global player in crypto in the space, uh, innovator. Uh, it's hard to get innovation. Tens of thousands of projects out there. And to get something that's actually innovating in the space, very hard. Uh, what we see is a lot of projects are just uh, copying and forking a lot of other projects. Um, and uh, But here, this is a world's first. So uh, big deal uh, from that point of view. All right, cool. What else there? we got Max Kixon says, did you cover the perpetuals and team price already? Uh, I have not covered that today, Mexican Mexican. I will probably be covering that tomorrow. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. I have got a video coming out on Maximus. Uh, to later today, Mexican Mexican. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a short form video. Now I'm trying to get back into short form videos uh, again. I got obviously had to cover uh, a, a couple of other projects just to make sure we're uh, welcoming people from those communities. Uh, otherwise, uh, you just don't uh, they, you know just don't uh, they don't uh, stay around. Uh, what else there? Uh, check my pulse. Says what's up, family? Sweet man, glad to catch you live. Been working weekends for that dry powder. Get your bags ready. Train is getting ready to leave the station. Your boy. I like that, man. You got me excited with that. Check my pulse. Yeah, yeah. Dollar cost average. Uh, accumulate. Get that dry powder ready. It's going to be pretty cool. So I've got a uh, video coming up on Maximus, on Poly Maximus coming up. I've got a video on if you miss Pulse Chain and Pulse X sacrifice, particularly Pulse Chain, uh, then I've got a video coming up for you uh, with some strategies around that in particular. Uh, I'm going to make some suggestions that you can think about, uh, particular one particular uh, that you can think about on that one. Uh, Pulse Chain and Pulse X will blow our minds. Can't wait. Yeah, we can't wait as well. And uh, what else there? Hex and Pulse Chain, 10X, 100X. Yeah, I think so. I think we're looking pretty good for that. All right, cool. Um, let's jump over. I think that's pretty much an hour and a half. How about that? How's how we rock and roll? Hope you guys enjoyed today's live stream. And uh, I, yeah, I thought it was pretty fun and entertaining. Lots of insights, man. We packed those in today's live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, if you want to catch up further, obviously jump into our Discord. 
We really are trying to make it a really family place. Obviously, this channel is a no drama channel, so you don't hear me calling it talking about much drama as much as possible. I try to avoid doing that. It's also a family channel, so basically we keep the language very neutral uh, so people can uh, enjoy themselves and just talk about crypto, talk about the cool community things that are happening, uh, and I think that makes it for a very vibrant place. All right, I hope you guys enjoy that. Subscribe, like, share, hit the bell, and of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, take care now. Bye for now. <laughs> All right, I better stop being silly, but this is the way it rolls. All right, take care, everybody. Bye for now.